pause the video for one second here and explain to you uh, about this airport. This is Lukla Airport. Uh, every flight comes in here. Um, everyone that's trekking to Everest Base Camp. This runway is the most dangerous runway in the world. I'm a licensed pilot and this runway scares me. It is only 1,720 feet long. And at the end of the runway, if you can see further down, there's a 2,000 foot drop off. There is so many factors you have to get right when taking off and landing, and it is treacherous. So, welcome to Luck Luck. Beautiful day today in the Himalayas. Uh, well, just warming up really good. Time to go up this uh, top layer. But well, check out this peak over here. A lot of people on the trail today. Okay, I'm gonna pause the video here and explain to you about the switchbacks and the dreaded switchbacks as I would call them. As you can see on the left hand side, there's people trekking up and on the right hand side, there's people trekking further up. So basically, this is how we get to higher elevation. Uh, these, these switchbacks can go on for an hour, sometimes two hours um, because we're at elevation. But right now we're at probably 10,200. My lungs are feeling it and you know we're just trying to ascend and every step is hard. This is one, this is another shaky bridge. <laughs> Just crossed that rickety bridge. What an adventure that was. The view was great. There's a ton of people out here today. There's our excellent guide. Say hello. <laughs> I must stay. This climb is kicking my ass. It's a hard day.
made it all the way to the top here, but we still got a ways to go. Okay, so I made it to Namche Bazaar. It was brutal. I mean, brutal, brutal. I'm gonna sleep good tonight. That's Nanche Bazaar down there. That's where we're staying tonight. And we just climbed a thousand feet from there. It's pretty high up. Above my right shoulder, as you can see it. We're going downhill now. I like going downhill. Taking a break, tea break, just just before we head out again. This is the view from our table. Up, halfway up, well not even halfway up, we're a quarter way up, still got a ways to go, but um, breathing is a little better today, and can't beat the views, can't beat the views. Stop for a snack break, me and my guy, uh, this is a great place for a snack break, let's check out the view.
the elevation here? Four, yeah, almost four, four, nine. 4 nine. Four thousand nine hundred meters. I have to calculate that back. <laughs> it was thin. <laughs> So we made it up to acclimation day. We made it up to 15,000 plus, and um, it was a workout. My legs are feeling it, but we're heading back down. This is where we came from, all the way down there. Gotta go back down. So it's day nine of our hike. As you can tell, the landscape has drastically changed. It went from pine trees and lush vegetation and rhododendron trees to a landscape similar to the surface of Mars. <laughs> Take a look. So we're taking a deserved, well-deserved break. Um, you guys see these amazing little huts here. They have slate roofs and they're made out of like brick. Looks like it'll, they'll last for like thousands of years. You check out the view. The view is amazing. It's good to sit down and catch your breath. As soon as you start walking, you lose it. <laughs> Feeling good so far. Taking it easy. One step at a time. One step at a time. have drastically changed. We're getting hit by little small pellets of hail. We still got an hour climb ahead of us and the temperature is probably about 20 degrees. It's cold. All right, today's the big day. It's about 8.30 in the morning, 7.30 actually. And we're heading to base camp. Elevation 7,594 feet. It's gonna be an eight hour hike, two and a half hours to Gorik Shep, then break for lunch. And then we're heading 
to base camp after that. I'll see you over there. So about 40 minutes left from Lubuche. Um, we hit a we hit a rear flat patch, which is such a relief. But I know after the flat patch, there's going to be a climb. So getting my oxygen, getting some water, and getting ready for a climb. All right. So remember what I said. Whenever there's a flat, length flat trail, there's always a climb. Well, here's the climb. I'll take a break, catch my breath, and start. <laughs> Still got a ways to go, but that was a climb and a half, and I'm exhausted. But here's the view. See all those people down there? They still got a ways to go. Taking a well deserved granola bar break <laughs> and sitting here enjoying our view. So, I'm gonna show you. So, that's the Kumbu Icefall over there, right? And that's the Kumbu. What, which one is this? What glacier is this? Lupsi Glacier. Lupsi Glacier. Okay. So, I'm gonna pan the camera. All the way to the left is a Kumbu Icefall. That's where the uh, Everest summoners start their climb to get to the top of the mountain. And in the middle is the Kumbu Glacier. So you can see all the way to the left there. That's the Kumbu Icefall. The glacier over there in the middle. It's just a spectacular view. on the trail is crazy with how many people. It's almost like waiting on a line in, in Disneyland. All right, it's 12.30 Sunday afternoon. We're making our way to base camp, Everest base camp. It should take us about two hours to trek there and one and a half hours to get back. Uh, it started to snow and the temperature out here is about 20 something degrees. Three quarter ways to base camp and um, almost got wet out conditions. Snow starting to come down a lot heavier, temperatures dropping, and it's cold.
All right, we're here at base camp. Yeah. There's a team right there. And our trusted guide, where's our guide go? Where'd he go? <laughs> it's right there. Uh, here we are, base camp. Everest base camp back there. As you can see way in the distance, there's all the tents. And there is the Kumbu Ice Fall. Uh, what a trek. It's a beautiful sight though, look. Right behind me is everybody waiting to take pictures at the Everest Base Camp sign. We just finished ours. What an amazing trek. And there's our ragtag team of hikers over there. <laughs> and our, our, our great leader. <laughs> <sighs> On our way back down from Everest Base Camp, my lips are all numb, it's freezing, it's raining, it's snowing, <sighs> temperatures drop probably into the teens. <sighs> so I got a, about an hour and a half to go. After two grueling hours in the snow, we finally made it back to Gorshep. I had a quick dinner and went straight to sleep. The next morning, we're all supposed to get up at 3.30 to hike to Kalapatar, which is 600 feet higher than base camp at 18,188 feet. I guess we're all glutton for punishment because here we are, it's 5.30 a.m. We've been hiking in the bitter cold now for about an hour and we still got another hour and a half to go. The sun hasn't come up yet, but we can see Everest over our right shoulder and it is spectacular. All right. It's 5.36, sunrise above Everest. Oh, I can't even talk, my mouth is so frozen. Sunrise above Everest, Everest is right behind me. That black granite peak that's right in the middle between those other two peaks. It's such a gorgeous day. So we're halfway up Kalapatar and it's freezing. I can't feel my toes, I can't feel my fingers. We're thinking about calling it halfway up. Uh, the, the trail is so treacherous, I mean, it's slippery, it's icy. This is the kind of trail you need ice axe and crampons. Um, we'll, see, we'll see when we get halfway up and we'll make a decision there, but it is cold. So we made it as high as 17,852 feet, uh, according to my altimeter. The temperatures were just incredibly cold. I've never been so cold in my life. We're gonna head back down to camp, have some breakfast, and then we have another nine hour hike ahead of us today. 
uh, we had to cover in three days what took us nine days so it's gonna be a long couple of days the Everest base camp trek was the most incredible thing and the hardest thing I've ever done in my life I'd like to thank Nepal hiking team and our incredible guide Pawan who uh, did an excellent job guiding us from day one all the way to Everest Base Camp. Thank you. So we were so triumphant on our trek to Everest Base Camp that the town of Kathmandu threw us a parade. Nah, I'm just kidding. This is just a local wedding. <laughs> Uh, my trip in with the uh, <coughs> Nepal hiking team was really amazing. Uh, I couldn't believe that I would complete uh, Kalapata and Everest Base Camp. And with all these 15 days of amazing memories and going back, uh, this also feels like home. And uh, basically, I'm not so used to this much cold, and now I'm actually uh, very much used to it. Uh, really happy with. You know, being with the mountains in this particular place in Lukla, the <laughs> coolest airport ever. Uh, I wish Nepal hiking team all the best for their future ventures. Uh, thank you so much for this amazing trip. How was how was your uh, guide, uh, Pawan? Pawan, Pawan was great. <laughs> Pawan was like uh, an elder brother. He inspired us and he kept telling us keep going on keep going on and he gave us the right amount of tips which were very much necessary so okay. Bye. 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 Bye.